Hello everybody and welcome to this little uh, webinar. What I'm going to talk about today is, is myself. So I just want to introduce myself and let people know what I do, who I am and uh, why I am a specialist in this field of rider biomechanics. Now my business is Applied Posture Riding and I teach trainers, uh, riders how to ride. I don't just give a group of exercises, I actually teach riders how to ride. So who am I? <clears throat> uh, well, my name is Annette Wilson uh, and I am a South Australian. I grew up in South Australia and I did most of my competition in South Australia. Uh, I was an event rider, I'm now retired. I started in the pony club scene went through the junior EA scene into senior competition and um, my ambitions were certainly very high but injury and circumstances didn't allow me to achieve them. But I certainly achieved a great deal in my career. So I've now retired. I still train horses. I'm a rider coach. Um, I'm a physiotherapist. I have a master's degree in physiotherapy. I am a functional movement trainer. This is more than uh, just a core trainer. With my education as a physio and this movement training, I am a rider biomechanics specialist. And there's a point of difference there, which I'll talk about in a minute. I'm certainly experienced and I'm absolutely still passionate about riding, training and allowing and training riders to be the best that they can be. I've had my fair share of injuries and I've certainly rehabbed from those injuries and now I'm pain free and I'm certainly um, probably one of the best uh, musculoskeletal states of my whole life actually. Now what do I offer? More than just riding coaching because I'm a physio I offer the normal physiotherapy service, assessment, diagnosis, treatment and rehabilitation and my specialty um, passion is chronic pain. I also do physiotherapy for the posture uh, for riding and I do posture riding assessments, rehabilitation, train people in functional core movement and I train riders basically to ride. One of the services I offer is a posture rider assessment. We can do this mounted uh, and we certainly can do it unmounted. And we can train the riding posture. I'm a riding coach. So I do a lot of rider coaching uh, in dressage and in jumping. And because of my background, I certainly know how to train and ride a horse. I do rider and horse rider tra uh, horse training now um, off the tracks, uh, horses with injuries um, for training and for rehabilitation. And here's just a couple of the horses that I've uh, trained over my year. This horse here came to me unrideable. This horse was a severe bucker. Um, and this is a little filly that I bred. So what is rider biomechanics? It's becoming a popular topic, um, more so in the Northern Hemisphere than here in, um, certainly in Australia. Rider biomechanics is the study of the movement for riding. So it's the study of the rider, it's not the study of the horse. Equine biomechanics is the study of the horse's movement. And once you've got knowledge and training in rider biomechanics. The knowledge in equine biomechanics and putting it together is certainly a great advantage for your training. So what does this involve? So we do some assessing, we test the range of movement and the strength of the rider. We work through movement patterns, exercises, stretches, look at resting postures and self-carriage postures. Now there's a difference here and the difference is going to be explained in a minute but this is where rider biomechanics truly comes into it. It's not just a matter of giving a rider riding exercises. So just quickly looking at the, this little uh, example here, this rider uh, in this example is pushing up through her toes so her calf muscle is doing the work. Here she's pushing up through her knee with her heel down so her quads are doing the work. That's just one example of how you can actually rise trot uh, using a different muscle group as opposed to um, 
just assuming how it works. So rider biomechanics is more than exercises. And certainly there's a lot of programs out there that give you riding exercises. You know, uh, Join this class, it's uh, exercises for horse riders. And yes, many of them are very good, but the clinical status behind the person starting with these uh, exercises is often missed. So we can have people with working postures, this needs to be uh, assessed. Our working posture is different for every single person. A resting posture, how do you sit at the end of the day? Your habitual postures, and if you're aware of them, you'll understand them. The personality of the rider. Some people are very hyper tense, others are quite laid back. This all comes into the training of your rider biomechanics. You need to know the medical history. What sort of injuries have people got? What sort of muscle imbalances have they got? And this only comes with testing. The current medical status, so is this the state that it's going to be or is this history and it can be uh, rehabilitated? What sort of pain have people got? The confidence of the rider. Certainly better riding skills give a rider better confidence. The lifestyle. You know, do people just um, work at a computer all day and then go home and ride? Um, are they home mums? Are they entrepreneurs? This plays a role in the success of your training. The goals of you as a rider. Some people really don't care whether they do more than just trail riding. The goal is that they're safe. Others are amateur recreational riders and they want to go through to novice dressage. And certainly there's a large number that want to go higher. But we also need to look at the partnership of the rider with their horse. And this is all part of the success of rider biomechanics. So it's more than just exercises. How much time have you got? And what sort of money are you going to spend on this? All needs to be considered. Now, we all know what the correct static riding posture is, but what is not uh, in common knowledge or uh, people have the education in is what is the correct knowledge of the musculoskeletal system. Yes, you can tell someone to go into this position. This is the end result. But how do they remain in that position through dynamic work? So we can all sit still up straight, but once the horse starts moving, that's when the biomechanical setups can fail. Now, a movement pattern is a biomechanically correct way of moving. So just as we see with that static posture, that's a biomechanical setup, but it's not a way of moving. So the movement patterns that are exclusive or inclusive for riding, we need to be able to tilt the pelvis, we need to be able to bend so extend and flex and rotate the trunk. We need to be able to do this independent of body parts. So our arms need to move in all directions. Our hips need to be able to rotate in and out. We need to be able to bend and straighten our knee and certainly bend uh, our ankle. And we need to be able to push through our ankle and push through our knee. Now, the chief key to good stability is certainly through the core, the upper back scapular muscles. Now, the ability to be able to independently isolate a movement pattern is not trained in just an exercise. And this is a biomechanical correct way of movement, moving. So as you can see here, if the hip collapses, and this purely is simply a, a weakness in the hip in combination with a collapsing of the foot. Now, a person who's just giving you exercises if they haven't got clinical training, they don't understand this pattern. So you need to collect, correct the foot and you need to correct the weight transfer as well as the muscle function that actually holds the pelvis stable as well as address the core. Now, a resting posture is where we slump, sag, slop. A self-carried posture is where we engage a lot of muscles anti-gravity to sit, stand, walk or be upright. So if you have a poor resting posture, then you will transfer that posture from sloth into the saddle. If you've got a good self-carriage resting posture, then you will be able to transfer that into the saddle. You cannot train this posture in the saddle. You must train it out of the saddle. The pelvic tilt. Now, in combination with the core strength, the pelvic tilt is one of the single most important 
movement, skills, abilities, coordination, uh, a rider absolutely has to have to be able to ride correct. Now, if you don't have the ability to independently isolate your pelvis, and I don't mean just wobble your hips around on a ball, I mean on demand, tilted into a forward tilt, on demand, tilted into a posterior tilt, through certain paces, keep it neutral, engage your core for the stability because the core does not move your pelvis, then your riding skills will always be limited. Again, there's many exercises where people use the ball to move their hips around, but the application or the function of how to do that, when to do it in the saddle, in conjunction with the aid, is what we call a, a biomechanical setup. So some of the setups that I use in my training, and this is exclusive to uh, um, applied posture riding. This is the symmetrical hand posture, and this is a resting posture. You can reproduce that on the ball. This is what I call a diagonal split hand movement. Now, of course, you're not going to ride like that, but if you use this as a training pattern out of the saddle and in the saddle, you can refine it down to be a functional skill or functional movement pattern in the saddle for use in your riding. So what we see here is that the rider is able to stretch the outside rein, maintain the balance on the inside rein. Now you need to be able to do that equally left and right, but at the same time, maintain the core, the hip, the knee, the foot, the upright posture. So this is an independent skill of the hand. It's an independent, isolated, functional movement pattern. It is not an exercise and it is not trained on the ball unless you have the setup, been, have you been sought, unless you've been taught the setup. Now, the function of the core is to stabilize the spine. It is not to move the pelvis. Now, this is something that is, is banded around in biomechanics uh, exercises. Your core does not apply a canter aid. Your core is used to stabilise your spine so you can then apply a canter aid using the correct movement patterns. The core is the key to all good riding. Now the clinical setup behind using the core is not known by people who just give you exercises. Now a little tip that I want you to go away with is if you've had pain in your body there's a very good chance that your core is not functioning or even strong and you need to know that and you need to retrain that. So here we can see the cores dropped out. Here we can see that the, the model has brought it in so she's activated the core on demand in isolation. So that's a movement pattern that I teach. It is also an exercise. Once you've got activation and core control, only then can you start to strengthen it. So a lot of these high-end core strengthening exercises that are given to people in boot camps, in Pilates classes, in uh, clinical setups, in uh, boot camps, in rider programs, they're not achieving success because they don't even know whether their core is engaged. Now, injury. You can't just go to an exercise program if you've had an injury and expect it to be successful. We all know what it does to your body. Now, what does it do to your riding? You have poor balance, poor skills and poor results. If you've got these happening in your body, then what does that have effect on your horse? Pain, resistance, poor performance, bad behaviour and sadly wrong gear being applied. And this is all a result of the effect of a poor riding skill, poor balance due to you know, certain medical musculoskeletal conditions and the outcome is that your horse suffers. Now, the benefits of training under a physiotherapist, certainly I do a complete clinical and posture assessment uh, and as a rider, I'm able to apply these findings and treatments and the rehab to the individual. So if I have a rider who says they tip forward or one leg drifts out, we do a clinical assessment and we're able to identify the musculoskeletal problems in that person so that we can then address that with exercises, then we address it with the movement patterns. 
Now, again, if you just started an exercise program and you've got uh, muscle imbalances, the person giving you those exercises doesn't know that. Now, if you've got an injury and you're using, like here, a tennis elbow, so if you're gripping dumbbells or uh, elastic bands, this can actually increase your pain. If you're not lifting correctly, then this can uh, cause micro problems in your back. If you've had a baby and you haven't tested for a gap, again, if you've been given exercises, this may not already be pre-known. So do you weight bear heavier on one foot than the other? Now here you can see the weight bearing surface of the right foot is much more dominant than the left. This affects the riding posture. This is not picked up in an exercise program. Now the bonus of also being under a physio is that you can claim it on your health fund. Now one of the things that I see um, very often is uh, these poor posture setups. Flexible flat feet. If you've got feet that flatten when you walk, it will directly affect your riding. Now exercises for riding will not fix your flexible flat feet. So you need to know this and this is a clinical assessment done by a physiotherapist. The relationship to the riding posture is the knowledge of the riding posture um, and the physio. You cannot have a posture like that and end up with a posture like that in the saddle. You have to train these imbalances out and you have to train these balances in. And you must do that with correct exercise and correct um, biomechanical setups. Again, if you're just given a group of exercises, the person giving them to you may not know this. Coming back to your lifestyle, it will directly affect your horse. If you're going to sit around with poor posture, if you do uh, other sports that have a repetitive in nature, if you lift in poor postures, if you've got musculoskeletal um, setups that predisposed uh, to uh, muscle imbalances, then again, the exercises that you've been given just because they're horse riding exercises doesn't mean they'll be successful. Now, all of these Photos here, we can see very poor biomechanical setups. Now, some of these are probably elite riders. This one, everything's wrong, just wrong. Here we've got a Western style rider. Now, they don't use a lot of contact with the reins, but here, and again, knowing what uh, push and pull and pressures mean, that is an anchor, so that will be a pull. This rider here, quite good hand position, but the balance is poor because she's lost her lower leg. Hence, the horse is not going to stretch. Here, again, when we've got a platform that we can push through, it means we're going to pull through another one. Same with this one and the same here. The transfer of the weight from the rise to the sitting trot, the lower leg is not stable. Now, we can all see that, and certainly you can do horse riding exercises that might help, but you actually need to know how to fix that in the saddle. Now, Pilates is very popular for horse riders. But in my opinion, and uh, now it's become evidence-based or not evidence-based, it's being dumped by the health funds. Pilates is now a little bit more out of favour. It certainly was marketed well, and I don't dispute that it's a very good program for exercising. But the thing about Pilates and riding is it does not teach you how to use your core in non-neutral spine. Now, riding, as I went through before, we need a very mobile controlled, flexible, independent pelvis stabilised by the core. This is not part of the exercises in Pilates classes. So the functional core stability is not transferred, particularly in non-neutral spine, in Pilates classes for horse riding. So it does not teach the rider to have self-carriage in various postures. Now, just a quick look at some of the products that I supply. Um, because I'm a clinical uh, physiotherapist, I treat pain. A back brace, not everybody agrees, and certainly if you've got back pain, give me a call before you buy one. I'm a big fan of a back brace. It does help support the spine. You don't live in it, and you learn how to use it, so it's a very good product. I'm uh, not a sun goddess, I do sell sun sleeves, so these come in white and black. So if you're just wearing a t-shirt and you don't want that uh, sunburn, sun sleeves. Now this little posture shoulder brace is one of my most popular and I'm very disappointed about that. 
um, most popular product because it does bring you from this round position into this square position. You then, if you've got um, a passion, you will then train with the brace rather than just wear the brace. But for a quick fix, it does bring the shoulder blades back square and it will bring you upright. It is not a miracle cure, but it is a very good little brace to do that. Now, this is my King Ping product. Again, they say if you've got a problem and solve it for yourself, many other people have got a problem. I've always worn jodhpurs that have been around my hips. Um, and as I've got older, I've tended to develop a muffin top. So what I designed was a wide waist, high waist, internal elastic core support breeches. You can buy them without the belt loops or with the belt loops. Um, nice little logo on the side. Internal elastic. Uh, very, very comfortable. This is a microfiber full stretch. They come in the silicon print or they come in a suede. Now, at this stage, I only have them in black. I guarantee if you put these on, you will absolutely love them. The feedback on this has been fantastic. And they are only available from my shop on my Applied Posture Riding website. Here's a few more pictures. Uh, you can take the belt loops out. The belt loops were actually designed, and I'll show you in a minute, to go with my core sensory belt. Here's the silicon print. Got a nice little V high-waisted at the back. So they're high-waist, wide-waist, internal elastic, core support, full stretch with a silicon or, or a... Um, suede print. Now, here's my core sensory belt. This is designed by me to activate people through their core. So it runs on the same idea or function of the core muscle. So it's anchored here and the elastic runs around the, be the belly in a crossover effect. So if your core drops out, the elastic tightens. If your core is engaged, the circle is smaller, and the elastic loosens. Now, to keep it in place, the belt loops were designed with the core support jodhpurs. This is one of the, uh, this is unique to my uh, website because I designed this. It is a fantastic little belt. Um, again, not for everybody, and it's got a certain purpose, and that is to remind you to use your core. It won't engage your core if you don't know how, it reminds you. So I also have training programs. Um, this is my ebook. It's only available as an ebook. Nearly 300 pages. Applied posture riding: the fundamentals of riding. Now this is also on the USB stick. So these two products are the same. The difference being is that the ebook on the USB stick also has the accompanying videos that go with each of the chapters. Now, some people are visual. They only need to read and look at pictures. Other people need to watch and follow along. So the difference being here is that the USB stick has all of the training videos that accompany the chapters in the Applied Posture Writing uh, eBook. I've got a membership program under construction um, that will run for a year and jam-packed with a lot of unique information. I run clinics by request. I do posture rider assessments and, as I said before, um, standard physiotherapy. I also do do horse physiotherapy, but more so in the training of the horse rather than the treatment of the horse. So that's in a nutshell or in a short webinar uh, about me, who I am and what I supply, what I do um, and my uh, credentials. Uh, I suppose my point of difference in this topic is the clinical training of my physiotherapy it gives me the knowledge uh, to be able to assess and treat you and set you up for success rather than just give you a standard group of horse riding exercises. I can also move on to training you in the saddle. So I'm based in South Australia in Sandy Creek. That's my website. Um, you can have a nice look around on my website. There is a lot of information there. If you want to look at my products, go to the shop tab and that's on the menu bar at the top. Uh, if you want to contact me, you can do that through the phone number, the website or my email. I also have a Facebook page. So Facebook Applied Posture Riding. And here are those details. Really like it if you could follow and share 
uh, like, follow and share my Facebook page. I do put a lot of information on there and I do give a lot of tips away. I also engage with people in discussion. I'm very happy to discuss this topic um, and other topics if you're interested. If you want to receive updates on products, clinics or general information or just stay in touch, go to the front page of my website and scroll down and you'll see my mail or subscribe to form. I do not spam mail. I don't send out very much. It's just a way of keeping in touch. And as I said before, my um, I suppose my primary or queen product is my ebook, and that's the uh, underwriter training in the shop. So that's me, Hannah Wilson, um, and that's my business, Applied Posture Writing. So I hope that's been helpful and uh, if you want more information about what I do or even just a chat about what you are, then uh, certainly give me, uh, contact me through those sources. So thank you for your time and um, feel good, ride good and be good. Thank you.